What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Big Dog Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. As always, it's your boy Nicholas. We're getting into some quick hits, quick reactions to the injuries that happened last night. This video in particular is going to cover Spencer Ware getting carted off the field in the Chiefs' third preseason game. Damn, it's hard covering this stuff on YouTube because you can't just, you know, write out a blog post and shoot it out. You got to get your information. You got to upload a video, film it, edit it, all that kind of shit. So we got to get right into this because I'm sure people are drafting today. So Spencer Ware gets carted off the field, like I said, in Kansas City's third preseason game. Look to be serious. Initial reactions were, oh shit, he's out for the year. It looks like a torn ACL. That's not what the news has been thus far. And right now it's early Saturday, 11 a.m. So the last news we have is that it's likely a sprain, some kind of sprain in the knee. I was scavenging through Twitter to find some retweets and find some things that maybe some doctors had said. And this is what I found from a, a Dr. Mark Addix. Addix? I don't know. You can read it. Spencer Ware, right knee PCL injury. Video makes complete tear unlikely. Could return in four weeks and avoid surgery. So for the most part, what I'm reading is that it's not going to be a long-term thing. It's likely a sprain. I don't know. PCL, MCL. We will get an MR. Oh, not we. Me and Spencer Ware are not going together. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm going out into the city after this to celebrate my birthday. So it's possible I tear some stuff up. But he'll get an MRI today. So we'll know more either tonight, tomorrow, or even maybe something will come out while you're watching this video. We'll say four weeks going off the doctor's tweet. What a world we live in where I'm analyzing things based off a doctor's tweet. Anyways, uh, that'll probably have him back into the lineup around maybe week three, maybe week four. So after Ware went down with this injury, we saw the snap count in the first half with the starters. It was Kareem Hunt, 16, to Charkandrick West, only 5. I think this is pretty clear to, to kind of tell you Hunt is the guy. It's not, it's not something we haven't known throughout the preseason. No one actually thought Charkandrick West had, had a big role in this offense. Before the injury, though, Ware has looked pretty good, and he, he was undoubtedly the starting running back in Kansas City, in my mind at least. You know, a lot, of, a lot of Hunt truthers will be like, oh, this sucks because now I can't throw it in the face of Ware owners. In reality, I actually think it, it saved the guys who were really high on Hunt. Not embarrassment, but I think they were going to be wrong. And I think Spencer Ware would have had a big role and would have been a big part of this offense had he not got hurt. And Hunt wouldn't have been that big of a play. Prior to the injury, Spencer Ware was going off the board in between like picks 60 and 65 around running back 20, which I thought was a value. Now, not only does the knee injury, you know, sideline him for at least a couple weeks in the regular season, but it opens the door for Kareem Hunt to just outright take that starting role in the Kansas City offense. So Kareem Hunt, right, he was already running with the ones in practice a little bit. He was splitting a lot of reps with Ware as, as well as in the actual preseason games. And to me, he's been nothing but impressed. You've only heard really, really good things about him through camp. You've only seen really good things on film throughout the preseason games. He passes the eye test for me with flying colors. He was actually one of like... If you followed me so far, I was, I, I've was i been very, very, very far off any of the running backs that have landed outside of the top two rounds in this year's NFL draft. Hunt was one of the few guys that I actually believed in his talent, and I believe that he can make an impact this year, and I think that we've seen nothing that would change my mind throughout this offseason. In college, Kareem Hunt played for Toledo, smashed their rushing record. He ran for almost 5,000 career yards there. He caught 41 passes in his senior year, which I think is kind of indicative of his skill set, and it kind of tells you that he can play all three downs. He can kind of do it all. He was named the Senior Bowl's most outstanding player, and he dropped in the draft basically due to a, a poor combine. It, he didn't put up like great combine numbers, not a great 40-yard dash or anything like that, but the Chiefs didn't care. They saw a value pick there. That's why they actually traded up in the third round to grab this kid. Looking like right now, obviously, we haven't even hit real NFL games, but it's looking like the Chiefs made the right move there. So we look into the preseason, right? What has Hunt actually done? He didn't get really any work in week one. He caught one pass for nine for nine yards, and he had a carry for that went for nothing. Following two games, though, Hunt has, has played a much bigger role in the offense. He's 5'11", around 215, so a really good size for a running back. Week two and week three of the preseason, he's combined for 102 total yards on 20 touches. He's caught three balls in just two games. So he's the clear number two behind Spencer Ware prior to the injury, right? Charkandrick West is still far, far, far behind Kareem Hunt for touches. But I would say it's possible you know, given his his experience in this Kansas City offense, given his, his experience with Alex Smith and his repertoire with the with the coaching staff there in Kansas City, it's very possible that they give Charkandrick West those third down duties because a lot of rookies, the reason they don't get playing time right away, even if they're good pass catchers, is because of pass blocking, right? And that's we haven't really heard anything negative on that front for Kareem Hunt. We haven't heard like, oh, he's struggling in pass blocking. 
but it's very possible that they just give that those duties to Charkandrick West. And you look at in 2015 when Charkandrick West took over when Jamal Charles was the back there, got hurt around week five, and Charkandrick West put up like 850 total yards, five touchdowns, and he caught about 20 passes. So he's more than capable of being a running back in the NFL. He can catch passes. He can block. So it wouldn't shock me to see Hunt get a lot of the early down work some pass and catch pass catching work split you know split third down carries with Jark Hendrick West it's worth noting and i know this is against backups and it's not like nfl talent really but uh, in their week two preseason game, the Chiefs, Charkandrick West sliced up the Bengals defense. He ran for 113 yards on just seven carries. He's just 26 years old. He's only 26. So I know you've heard the name a lot around the NFL. He's had times where he's had a lot of buzz, so you kind of figure he's an older guy. But he's just 26 years old. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't kill the messenger, bro. I mean, overall, whoever gets the nod, and I'm, I'm completely in, in favor of Kareem Hunt being that guy, it's going to be a really big value in fantasy football because you look at Andy Reid, look at this Chiefs offense. Since Andy Reid took over as the coach in 2013, we'll look at the running back finishes. In 2013, it was running back one. 2014, running back six. In 2015, Jamal Charles was RB2 through the first five games. He got hurt. Charkandrick West was the guy for the rest of the season, and he was a top 20 back for the rest of the season. Then Spencer Ware last year, running back 15 in fantasy. So a lot of that heavy, heavy production in the earlier years was, of course, you know, a salute to Jamal Charles as being an absolute stud. But you see, like, no matter who is the guy there, they do want to use one back to do a lot of the work there, and it's going to be a good value. They're a good, they're not a great offense, of course, but they're a really good overall team. They see plenty of scoring opportunities. And I think that's where, you know, Hunt will make a lot of money now. So where does this leave Hunt in drafts, right? I think the way you have to look at it is... You have to at least put him where Ware was going and probably higher. Because the reason Ware was going around pick 60, the only reason he wasn't going higher is because they drafted Hunt, right? You're like, oh, Hunt has uh, a chance to steal a lot of work from Ware. Now you flip that and it's looking like, well, when Ware returns, he he's competition. He's a threat to, to Hunt's workload. And the fact that you're getting Hunt for a few games, I would say minimum two, maximum probably three four at this point from what we know. So it's basically the same situation we had where scared of or a threat from Hunt taking work, but now it's Hunt with a threat of Ware taking work when he comes back, but you're getting Hunt for a few games without Ware even there. So I would put him at where was going, probably higher. Prior to the injury, Kareem Hunt was going off the board between like pick 80, 85, around RB30, give or take, where you're getting your ADP data from. This is all from MFL, so all cash leagues, real, real money. I expect him to shoot up into probably the fourth or fifth round in, in the drafts that are coming within the next week or so. I'm not saying I'd pick him there. I'm, I'm not comfortable picking him in the fourth round. I think that's a, probably a little too early considering where will return and will be a part of the offense. So I'm gonna go with you know a general number for a pick so I don't discriminate against any league sizes. I'll probably be cool drafting Hunt in the mid 40s. And I will say for those of you guys who purchased my draft guide, I'm working on updating all my rankings uh, in count, accounting for what preseason games have already taken place, the, the Kareem Hunt injury, the Julian Edelman injuries. Those will be emailed out to you guys within probably the next hour or so. So stay tuned for that. And the, the Julian Edelman video, as soon as I'm done with this one, I will get to that. I'll start working on that video. So also stay tuned. I'm working hard over here at Big Dog's headquarters. More to come today. And for those of you guys who have not purchased the draft guide, I highly suggest you do it. I've heard only nothing but, but good feedback from people who have purchased it, updated rankings throughout the entire preseason up until your draft. So yeah, like I said, around pick probably mid 40s is where I'd be comfortable taking Hunt. And we look at some of the ADPs that are going around there. And we look at Ty Montgomery. He's pick 42 right now, running back 15. The next running back, is Carlos Hyde at pick 45, running back 16. So I put Hunt right in the middle of those guys. I wouldn't take him over Ty Montgomery, but I would definitely take him before Carlos Hyde. And that doesn't mean that I ha I'll have him ranked as running back 16. That just means in terms of where the ADPs are right now, I would definitely take him after timeout, but before Carlos Hyde in that mid 40 range. And the next running back off the board isn't until Mark Ingram, which is like 10 to 12 picks later. And that's after Carlos Hyde. So that's about where Hunt would fall for me. Where shoots down pretty far on my list. We still don't have a definite timetable for his return nor do we know how big of the role he's gonna have when he does return. I'm sure Andy Reid's not just gonna stop using him. We'll have to see how impressive Hunt is, which I'm sure he will have a few good games. So we look at their, we'll look at their top, their first three matchups, because we'll, I'll expect Ware to be back probably week four. First game is, ooh, a nighttime, showtime game against the 
They're at New England. New England's a pretty good defense, as always they are. They were a top 10 rush defense last year. Then they play the Eagles, who were ranked 16th, so middle of the pack. But I actually expect that Eagles defense to be improved, and I expect them to be a pretty good defense. And then they play the Chargers, another very good run defense. So he's got three pretty difficult games to, to start off the year. I don't think any of them are, are matchups that I would necessarily be scared away from. I like that Pats matchup only because I'm sure the Pats will kind of run up that score or score a lot of points on offense, which means Hunt will be used pretty heavily in the passing game. But overall, it's not it's not a schedule that I'm, I'm necessarily shying away from. So where I think that pushes him back to at least probably the ninth or 10th round, maybe even later, depending on, on where you value him. You know, we have Frank Gore going off at pick 92, Terrence West at 99. I would probably take both of them before Spencer Ware. The next back off the board is like five to 10 picks later, which is Eddie Lacy. And I mean, in drafts right now, that's probably not where it is, but I'm just going off ADP data. I would take Spencer Ware definitely before Eddie Lacy at this point. And to me, Charkandrick West is definitely, and him and CJ Spiller, I'm not even really going to mention Spiller. Maybe he'll split third down work. To me, West is nothing more than a, a late round flyer. You know, Ware will be back in, in two, three, four weeks which will pretty much make Charkhantic West irrelevant again. So I'm not taking West even if I end up owning Ware in the later rounds. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up. I just wanted to get something out quickly for you guys because I know it's draft season and a lot of you guys are probably drafting either today or tomorrow, I'm sure, is a big draft day. For what it's worth, Jaguars named Blake Bortles as starting quarterback. Sucks for Allen Robinson. What a world we live in that a fan base can legitimately, has a real legit reason to be mad that Chad Henney is out there starting quarterback. Jaguars, man. What a time to be alive. Anyways, that's going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed, please scroll down a little bit and give it that thumbs up. I would appreciate that greatly. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I drop videos like this all the time. And leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on Kareem Hunt? A lot of you guys probably already drafted and have him on your squad, which is fucking awesome because I'm sure you picked him in the 8th, ninth, 10th round. So salute to you guys. But I want to know your opinions because I did this real quickly and I could, you know, I could be missing a lot here that I'm not seeing. So hit me with your best opinion on Hunt. And I'll see you guys in probably another hour or two with, uh, with the Edelman injury video. Peace.